G'day again, it's Richard Maher from Mars Classes. Um, today we're going to have a look at uh, how you can determine the work that is done by an electric field when it moves a charge through that electric field. Now an example of a device which um, provides work or, or changes the energy of a, a charge in the field is um, an electron gun. Now it doesn't actually look like this, but uh, the internals of an electron gun are essentially, there's um, a few components, there's, there's a heater, uh, which uh, provides a really high temperature which essentially boils off electrons, the valence electrons from the metal. Um, there are two electrodes, there's uh, a cathode which will repel the electrons which are ejected from the heater and an anode which will attract the electrons that are ejected from the heater. Now those electrons are going to be boiling off um, randomly over time and as they, they leave the heater, as I said, the, the cathode will be repelling those electrons, but the anode will then be attracting them. And each time uh, the anode is attracting them, you see that they're being directed away at a, a high velocity. So uh, when we look at um, this electron gun and, and we think, where can you find these electron guns? Well, in fact, the old TVs that your mum and dad used to have with the cathode ray tube actually had an electron gun at the back. And the interesting thing with them, we'll see later on, is the electrons which were fired by the electron gun then went through uh, cross-magnetic and electric fields to direct them to the phosphor screen and, and strike different parts of the phosphor screen to make it um, glow in whatever colours the images were that you were meant to be seeing. Another example of where you can find an electron gun, and we'll look again at that in uh, subsequent videos too, is in a mass spec, a mass spectrometer. Um, now the mass spectrometer is something that fires charged particles through um, a, a, an electric field but then as it goes through a magnetic field um, there'll be a force supplied at right angles to those moving charged particles and dependent on the mass and the charge of them will determine how much uh, their path will bend and then from that we can actually where it strikes the detector determine what the mass of the particle was. Okay so let's now have a look at um, the work done uh, by that field on the charged particle. And we'll go back to when we looked at a, um, a gravitational field and the work done on moving a mass in a gravitational field. And you remember we, we said if you, if you raise a mass in um, a gravitational field, it will gain potential energy. And that potential energy is equivalent to the work that you've done on it. Remember also that en ergon, uh, work in, is um, the Latin en ergon. So uh, when we look at energy, it is actually the work done. So this particular mass, when it's been raised, has gained uh, potential energy uh, equivalent to its mass times the ex um, gravitational field strength times the height that it was raised through. And then when it falls through that field, the field will actually have done work on it and it will cause it to have changed the potential energy into kinetic energy, which is equivalent to half mv squared. So let's, let's now apply that to um, the electron gun we've been looking at and the uh, work that uh, it does on the charged particle while it's in the field. Remember we said that these particles uh, will boil off the heater, be repelled by the cathode, uh, directed to the anode and accelerated by the, an uh, the anode as it passes through. Now each of those charges um, have moved through an electric field. And we remember we described the electric field intensity as equivalent to the force per unit charge. We also defined the electric field intensity as equivalent to the potential difference between the plates and the distance between the plates. So the electric field intensity is uh, the voltage on D or V on D. So because they're both expressions of electric field intensity, we can say that F on Q is equivalent to V on D. And by rearranging that, we get FD equals VQ. Now, when we go back to you know, year 10 type work and we looked at uh, a definition of work, work is force times displacement. Well, we've got that there. We've got FD equals VQ. So we can actually now say that the work done on those charges is equivalent to the uh, potential difference between the plates multiplied by the charge. So the work done is the gain in energy. And we've just determined that the work done is VQ. So VQ is the gain in energy. Now, what energy do these charges gain? They gain kinetic energy. They're, they're leaving this electron gun at quite a high velocity. So we can say that VQ is equivalent to half mv squared in this situation. Now, look, we're getting close to exam time at this time of the year, and you're probably wondering what type of questions can um, the examiners pose for you on this um, outcome. So I've put an example up here from the 2015 WACE. Now, this is the um, you know, preamble information before they start asking the question. Uh, the questions I'm going to display on the screen uh, shortly, um, the, it goes, to, oh, what is it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I think it goes up to part G. Um, so I'll put the uh, questions up and then I've got the work solutions that the examiners um, will be expecting as the um, responses. So my suggestion would be is um, 
um, look at the questions, pause the screen, the screen when you get all the questions up, and then work through them. Now this is a 21 mark question. You're probably looking at around about 20 minutes to get it answered. So uh, you can pause the screen, give yourself about 20 minutes to have an answer, uh, have a go at answering it. And then once you're satisfied with that, um, have a look at the work solutions, which I'm going to provide in a little bit. Okay, so here's the work solutions for A, B, and C. Now, a few things I'll point out. Uh, to determine, uh, not determine, to ensure that you get the, the full marks, you've got to make sure that you, you give the correct units for every answer you provide, and also look at the uh, number of um, significant figures in your response. Now, this is from the, um, the waste paper, the West Australian paper, and it is three significant figures unless otherwise specified. So you'll notice all the final answers are at three significant figures and the units, um, you would lose marks if you didn't have the correct units. So just uh, honestly mark your response, and now I'll provide the answer for part D. In fact, what, what we've looked at here is uh, all of A, B, and C uh, have been covered from previous videos we've looked at. The next parts, D, E, F, and G, are going to be really later in the course, but um, you can come back and have a look at the, those ones later on. So there's the answer to uh, D. And the final responses as well. If you've got any queries about any of these um, responses or, or the things on the marking key, just post um, below and I'll try and respond. Um, but that'll be it for now. And what I'm going to try and do in the, in the subsequent videos is uh, try and offer you uh, um, an example question and an example responses um, for each of these because as I know you are preparing for exams at this point in time. Okay, until next time I will see you.